Hello, I'm Damla Senol Kali. I have recently received my PhD degree in computer engineering from the Safari Research Group at Carnegie Mellon University. And it's an honor to hold the title of being the last student at Safari Research Group from the CMU side, actually. And my thesis is on uh, like accelerating genome sequence analysis via hardware software co-design. And after my graduation, I have joined Bionona Genomics as a staff software engineer specialized in hardware acceleration, where I'm working on applying my background on hardware software co-design and genome analysis into accelerating analysis of optical genome mapping data. Today, I won't be talking about my research or my works. Instead, I will be talking about my thesis and defense preparation and also job search process. Let's start with my thesis and defense talk preparation. So um, the main body of my thesis or the main part of my defense talk were of course coming from the, um, my papers or my talks, but the main effort that I put into during both of the pre preparation processes were for coming up with a coherent, interesting, and also impactful story that combines all of these works, which are, of course, related to the big picture of my research. So what I did during all those years, of course, had a big picture, which was accelerating sequence analysis, of course, but all the pieces, you have to come up with a, like a story that combines all of them, which goes into your introduction, for example, for all the for both the defense talk and also your thesis. And during our all those years of our PhD, we sometimes like forgot about it because we lost into like submissions, rebuttals, like camera readies, all these things, and like finalizing our projects. And sometimes we like don't think about the big picture. But when it comes to those like lost step of your PhD, you have to really come up with a story that combines all of your efforts, all of your works. So that was the main like uh, effort and time I spent during those preparations. So as an advice, what I can say is, so during all those years, when you are working on the projects, think about that. So yes, next I want to work on this project, but eventually when it comes to like graduation, which I need to prepare a defense talk and thesis, what are the like the merging uh, ideas between my previous work and my next work. So you have to really think about that. Otherwise, it might really become very challenging when writing your thesis or pre -pre preparing a defense talk. And for my defense talk, actually, what was different than the um, like uh, talks I gave in different venues is, yes, you merge all of those talks in a coherent way, but also since your audience is typically the thesis committee plus your like uh, colleagues and some other people from your school maybe, so they know the most of the details. But again, you have to think about and be prepared for the big picture of your research or the whys. So why you did this, who will get benefit from that, and also the future works as a next step, what somebody else or you can do to improve the work or and like develop newer ideas out of your thesis. So you really need to think about those things when getting ready for your defense talk. So I was 100% sure that I was getting those kind of questions and I did. And I'm glad I got prepared because you had a chance, even though you are graduating, you have a chance to really think about these kind of um, important things about all your years, actually. And next, I would like to talk about my job search process. As you can understand where I joined, which is a company, I was in the industry job market during this uh, summer. And um, I have some like tips I would like to share with you. So first of all, 
of course, building a network. During our PhD, yes, we go to some conferences, meet new people, get connected with them. But we really never talk, like think about the last step, which is graduation and what will happen next. So, um, and you really need that network during that like time frame. And uh, yes, I attended conferences, met with new, new people, connect with them. But eventually, I had to build my network even further when it comes to job search, actually. And what I did is I contacted many people which I thought could be really uh, helpful. I, some of them I, for some of them, I knew them beforehand. But for some of them, I went out my comfort zone. And even though I have never met them before, I contacted them and explained who I am, what I'm looking for, and any suggestions. It can be someone from academia, which you can get some suggestions, or it can be someone from a company that you might be interested in. So I never hesitated. Again, as I said, it is out of my comfort. It was out of my comfort zone, but don't be shy. Don't hesitate. Reach out to as many people as you think could be really helpful because some of them might be your, your like next colleague or someone like that. So, uh, and I heavily use LinkedIn for that purpose. And whenever I like reach out to someone that has no idea who I am, I attach my resume, like my the a personal like uh, or research statement I prepared, a long one, short one, with them and explain what I'm looking for. And most of the time I was successful with getting a like a suggestion, a reply, whatever you are seeking for. So you really definitely need to try that when it comes to job search. And second, for the whole process, which involves many steps, like you should be utilizing all the resources you have around you or anyone that is willing to help you. And one of the very crucial resources I had was the career center at Carnegie Mellon. And um, I think especially for the non-technical parts, yes, technical parts, of course, uh, especially as a PhD student, is very important, your skill set, everything. But there is also a side which involves like psychological or behavioral part. And for those kind of steps, I like reach out to the career center, get connected with someone. And for all those stages, I got help with the document preparation, like going over my resume, my personal statement, and then applications uh, like how, how to apply where to apply what to say and also uh, for the interviews i did mock interview for example for the behavioral part which was very very important because this was the first time i was doing this so it was very um, helpful for me and also for the last part which is like going over the offers and negotiation those kind of things i really got help from them so use all the resources you have around you. They can be all really helpful. And as a final tip, I think it was it was important for me have a prioritization list for the positions, offers, uh, whatever. So whether it is the company, size of company, the position, the salary, or other details in the offer letter, maybe the city, those kind of things. Be have a like a list of prioritization beforehand think about it really think about it and when it comes to like talking with the recruiters or like the hiring managers be transparent about it and when it if you like eventually have multiple offers it would be really helpful for you to list them and it can really ease your like decision process so be ready to have that those kind of prioritization lists too. I had, and I luckily I ended up in a like a position in a company which checks uh, all of the maybe most of the uh, like those uh, things in my list. But it is really helpful if you would end up in a dilemma or something. And as I said, be transparent when you are talking with the hiring managers, recruiters about that. So hopefully these can be helpful for most of you. So I will conclude my talk right now and I want to wish everyone happy holidays and also happy, successful, and most importantly, healthy new year. Bye-bye.